Okay, what we're going to go through here is this ISO number. I'm going to show you a few photos. This will explain the ISO and then what we're going to do is just go through the settings on the camera. So let's get those photos going and we'll talk after you've been through these. Okay, I've just pulled up a few images now to show you about ISO or ASA number, mostly it's ISO now. ASA it used to be when you had film. Now, as we explained before, the ISO is the sensitivity of the chip or your film to light. Uh, it kind of goes back to when we had little light sensitive crystals on a uh, film for cameras that's why when you were buying film it would say ISO 100, ISO 1600 because it was how sensitive those little crystals were to light. Now with digital cameras we have the same thing uh, but each megapixel, each pixel is like a light crystal it, it you know, picks up the light and it's how sensitive it is. This is what the ISO is on your camera. If you've got ISO 100 it's not as sensitive to light but you get a very good quality picture now if you go ISO 1600 or 32 it becomes very very sensitive to light but you get this sort of grainy effect here now if I can zoom there we go that's a better one for it you see here we've got all this pixelation this is because it's a very high ISO it's such low light here that I had to set it to you know 1600 ISO I had to work on the slowest shutter speed I could I think it was 1 60th 1 90th of a second I had to use as slow as I can while using it handheld and the aperture was at like f as low as it would go 2.2 or 4 whatever it was that way I'm letting in as much light as I can through the shutter speed through the aperture but it's still not enough light that way I've got to sacrifice the picture quality by going up the ISO. Let's find another shot. Now, similar thing, but I need to sell these prints so I would sacrifice shutter speed by using flash and then I can work up the ISO again. I can be at ISO 100, therefore if these guys want a poster size picture it's still got the quality. It needed that quality so I sacrifice the natural light which I prefer to work in for flash photography but that way I could work on a ISO 100 and then no problem selling the picture. Same again here we needed to capture this with natural light it's no good having the flash photography like this one because that just absolutely kills this picture dead. What we needed is to use a slow shutter speed but oh, same thing I should add a tripod but I was working handheld that night uh, it's sort of 1 60th 1 90th of a second it's as slow as I can go without it being too out of focus it's a little bit out of focus anyway but so we set the shutter speed as slow as I can get away with and we pull the aperture right down to f4 still too dark so I had to you know go higher up the ISO it's always a last resort for myself going up that ISO because you sacrifice this picture quality you see the grain in here it's not as bad if you've got a black and white you can get away with it people are more used to it seeing a slightly grainy black and white it's got more of a pulpy quality on a shot like that or a shot like this it's noticeable really and there's nothing you can do about it but that's what comes when you're shooting in sort of low light conditions same here you can see this sort of grain across the shot here but I needed to capture this image and I had to I was probably working on slightly faster shutter speed sort of one one hundredth aperture all the way you know f4 f2 whatever I could as low as I could get away with but it was still too dark so I had to jump up that ISO and sacrifice a bit of the picture quality to get the shot but they still work and you get the shot Okay, hopefully those uh, pictures gave you a good idea of the ISO and how it changes the light and the sensitivity in the camera. As I said, the sacrifice is the picture quality, it's that graininess. Now, with all cameras, they'll have an ISO setting, you just hit that and it brings up this scale. This one's got 100 to 1600, it's a sort of bottom end digital SLR. Camera models will vary, but ISO does the same thing across the board. So whenever I'm doing a shot, I am looking 
to avoid putting it to this 1600 because I know it's going to go grainy. Sometimes if you're shooting in a church for a wedding, they have very low lights or you know sports tournaments, stuff like that, and you have to sacrifice it. But like I said, it's always a last resort. So hopefully that's been of some use to you. And just get out there and take photos. It's the best way, really. Digital doesn't cost anything. There's no film cost, no development. You can put them on the computer. You can see straight away on the back. Get out there and take lots of shots in lots of different conditions. The camera will always tell you if you hit play on an image. And if you press display on this one, there we go. It breaks it down to more. So you've got one eight hundredth of a second this was shot on. 4.0 aperture and ISO 100. It will always give you the information, so you don't even have to take a pen and paper and make a note. Get out there, take photos, and when you get to a certain stage, we're going to put more video tutorials onto this site and onto YouTube. So hopefully, hopefully you found them useful, and for more information or our forum, log on to www.worldphotographicclub.com, and uh, we look forward to seeing your pictures in the photo competitions.